All right. So before the break, we developed this classic model of the, what we call the quadratic model for the transistor current. We saw that there's a triad region, and then there's a quadratic region. This is basically what we call the classic long channel MOSFET model. Now, one of the other things that's important about this thing is, is to understand how much charge there is in the channel when you are in different modes of operation. Now, particularly, especially when you are in the pinch off, the question is that how much charge is there? What is the amount of total charge in there? And this is very important. Why is this important? Why do we care about knowing how much charge is in the channel? Because that's the charge that you need to establish and take out when you switch the transistor or when you, when you change the voltage on the gate. And the amount of charge is important because that's kind of it's some sort of a capacitance, right? Because now you have to think about, you may say, oh, well, look, this looks like a parallel plate capacitor. There's a gate and there's a, and yeah, it does look like that, except for the fact that charge is not uniformly distributed on the other side of it. So the question is, how much charge is in the channel when you have, you're in the, tri, in the pinch off region? Because that would charge will, as we'll see, determine the capacitance that will determine the maximum speed of operation and would tie into a lot of operation. And this is somewhat similar, if you remember, for the bipolars, we also had this base charge, right? This, 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 this minority charge carrier density in the base that determined the primary behavior of QB or QF. You know, we talked about that. So somewhat similar to that. So we want to understand how much charge there is. So the question is, how much charge is there in this channel? Well, how do we determine that? If you wanted to know what is the charge in this channel? Well, we need to know what the DQ is. So we know that the inf infinitesimal of the charge, right? So we already have done that calculation. We know that DQ is given by this expression. Now, if I wanted to calculate the total channel charge now, what should I, what should I do? So let me just re reproduce that expression here. So DQ is going to be W C ox VGS minus VT minus V of X. Of course, we are making the same assumption as before that the VT does not change across the channel. We know this is not a correct assumption in general. It's a simplifying assumption we are making to make our lives easier. Uh, so with that assumption, so that's the charge. So if I want to know what is the Q channel, what would it be? It's the integral of DQ across the channel, right? from one end of the channel to the other end of the channel. So what should I, if I integrate it over this quantity, it would be W C ox integral from 0 to L effective of VGS minus VT minus V of x dx. So how do I calculate this integral? Because if I wanted to do it in terms of dx, then I need to know what V of x is. I need to know the voltage across different points on the channel. And we haven't made any assumptions about the profile of that being linear or something like that, right? It, just, it, it is what it is. So you can imagine that it would be easier to just do this integral over what? Instead of length, over a different parameter. Over voltage, exactly, right? And how do we do that? How do I convert this? Well, I have a relationship between the voltage and dx and dv. So I can solve for dx in terms of this, which will be proportional to dv, and plug it in. So if I do that, if I solve versus for dx, what do I get? I get dx is um, mu n c ox w over id v g s minus v t minus v of x dv, right? If I plug this back into this equation, what do I get? I get Q channel is, now I have a whole bunch of other stuff coming out of this guy, right? So I have a mu n, I got a C ox squared, I got a W squared over ID, and then I get, now we get VGS I get, we get VGS minus VT minus V squared dV. Now, this is a lot easier to integrate, right? So you get a cube over 3. So you get this expression cube over 3. And integrate it from what to what? So now this is also important. What are the limits of this integration? 
So you have to think about the voltages across the channel, right? What is the voltage here? Zero. What is the, uh, we are going as far as L effective. What is the voltage here? It's this, right? We are integrating across this whole region. So it's integrated from 0 to Vgs minus Vt. So this integral is pretty straightforward. So you get a two third, you get a one third there. And then what you have basically is going to be this. Now, when you apply, so let, let's do the integration. Let's just do calculate the integral. Mu n c ox squared w over squared over id. And then the integral of this thing is going to be 1 third or negative 1 third Vgs minus Vt minus V to the power of 3 evaluated from 0 to Vgs minus Vt. Okay? And if you plug in Vgs minus Vt, you get 0. And if you plug in 0, you get Vgs minus Vt to the cube over 3. So this becomes mu n c ox squared w squared over id over 3 vgs minus vt to the power of 3rd. OK? But now we have an expression for id in terms of vgs minus vt in the pinch-off region, which is basically mu n c ox squared w squared vgs minus vt to the cubed divided by 3 over 2 because there's one half for that, mu n c ox, let's keep that one half here, not to com confuse things, um, w over l, vgs minus vt squared. So this cancels that, this cancels that, this cancels that, this cancels that. So you end up with 2 thirds w l c ox vgs minus vt. So this is important. So basically, the channel charge is 2 thirds of what you get for this Vgs minus Vt when you integrate it. And you will see these 2 thirds in expressions we use for capacitances and all those things. It's because of this integration. Nothing magical about it. It's just an integration that gives you the total charge in the channel. So and from this. You can actually, if I wanted to calculate some sort of a CGS, and we'll talk about this in more detail, the gate source capacitance, we can define it as dQ um, channel divided by dVGS, right? And when you differentiate it, of course, you will see 2 thirds WL C ox. So it's C ox times the area. So this is the, capa this is the capacitance of that parallel plate capacitor of the gate, right? But the effective capacitance due to the charge in the channel is 2 thirds of that because of this calculation. That's where that 2 thirds come from. Any questions on this? All right. So yeah, that's an important calculation, but it's a relatively straightforward one. And we'll use this result later.